How you going guys? Um, welcome to my half-built shed. So, <laughs> I'm pretty excited about that. But today, we're gonna talk about the Bushman's 85 litre stand-up fridge. Should you buy a stand-up? Are you better with a chest fridge? Or are you, would you like a drawer fridge? So, I've had all three for my, my experience with fridges, I guess you'd say. So just gonna give a quick rundown on sort of why I reckon the stand-ups are bloody awesome and why I chose it. And then just sort of a bit of a rundown on the Bushman itself. So, Let's get into it. Just to start with, I suppose I go over why I've sort of just chosen a stand-up just in general. So, I got re recommended to go, go to stand-up by um, Box Welding, because he obviously he's built a canopy and he's, he's put heaps in, he's had a lot of things to do with all different types of fridges and stuff like that. So, um, there's a couple of reasons why I reckon, especially in a canopy, they're just, they're just, I would say they're so much better than having a chest fridge. So, that's just my opinion. I'm sure other people have other lots of Lots of different opinions, but this is mine. These are my arguments, all right, to say why why I reckon it's better. So, to start off with, the ease access, like straight up, boom. Look at this height here, like, we're down to like the top of my belly, to the bottom of this fridge, and my car is jacked up pretty high with this tray on it and everything, so if I had a, if I had a chest fridge, you need to be, you know, obviously you be up here, there's no way I'll be able to see in that. It's 85 litres of space, which is absolutely huge. That's double what my old ingle was to start off with. We've got a freezer as well up here. It's just, it's a bit of a flex on your mates when you pull out ice creams and um, zuba dupers and stuff on a hot day. So, it's just awesome having a freezer. I've never had a freezer before, but um, yeah. Basically, it's so easy to get into to start with. Eliminates you needing a fridge slide, so. Obviously, these, this fridge, I think they're about $1,400, just straight up, but um, this eliminates you needing to, one, buy the other fridge, which I don't know how much they're gonna cost, say, 1200 I'm not, not too sure, I haven't looked into other fridges for a while, just your normal chest fridge. Then you have to buy the slide, and then if it slides out, you're still gonna be up here, so then you're gonna go, oh, I need to buy a drop-down slide. It'll drop down to here, you can see in it, that's brilliant. But the amount of space that's gonna take up in the canopy is just, I think it's just a big waste of space, to be honest. I don't have a lot of a lot of storage because of because of the dog dog box situation I've got going on. So my canopy section is only about 900 wide for, for two people and it's I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty tight. So saves a hell of a lot of space, saves saves money overall because um, you don't have to buy the fridge and the slide, and it's a lot lighter as well. And if I had a fridge slide, honestly, guys, this would take up the whole side of this canopy pretty much for if you wanted an 80 litre fridge in here. So that's sort of my reason why I went with this way over, over say, a chest fridge. I have had a drawer fridge before. I had an Ingle 30 litre drawer fridge in my old little dog box canopy setup. It was awesome. I did, I did like it a lot. The only downside to it was one, it, Obviously it wasn't as big, because it's, it's not even half the size of this one. But um, it did, eliminate, same thing, eliminated the need for a fridge slide and you could get good access into it and everything. And it was awesome until you went and opened up bowls of milk. Because the drawers, they're only about this skinny, you can't stand your milk up in them. And when they're laying down, they're fine until you open them. But if you crack one open, and then it's going, you're out on the tracks for the day, it's on the side, it will leak pretty much everywhere. It doesn't matter, it was juice, it was ice break, it was milk, it was everything. So I ended up with a big mess every single day. So that's basically my reasons why I chose chose this one. So, and it's just a nice finish, really. I'll, I'll bring you guys in and we'll have a look and see what's going on inside the fridge. This is all a bit messy. I haven't, honestly, I haven't cleaned this out since our last trip, but, um. This is basically what you get. Um, this is, that's not actually part of it. That's something me and Sam bought for the fridge that we we're trolling, but we're gonna pull that out. It's a bit of bit of a waste of space. Basically, oh, let me fix up all this. I should have probably made this not as messy. Oh, I really like it, because you get the section. This is, all right, this is, if you're looking for a reason, I was, I sold, I sold my mate Jake when he was asking, like, should I buy one or should I not buy one? And I was like, this is my reason for buying one. You can fit a whole slab on the bottom shelf by itself and more. So that's how much room this thing has. And then you still got, you put a slab of drinks in there, plus you got two shelves for your food. It actually comes with another shelf, but I've pulled it out just to create a bit more space. I reckon it works a little bit better like this. And then you've also got your freezer up the top. What else have we got in here? We got 
this section up here is just dedicated for cans. Um, or, well, yeah, basically just cans or small drinks or stuff. Mine is very messy though. I, I must admit, I haven't cleaned it. This is all filthy. Um, this is a very raw video. You get, I don't, we don't really fake much. So this has been well used. Um, so yeah, cans go up here. Um, you can put all stubbies and stuff down here or your milk. Um, these have these little bracket things that you can slide along. Because as you can see, it's very wobbly. Slide this across. That locks it in quite nicely. Stops everything from falling over. And yeah, basically, you do have to be a bit careful with how you stack it. Because like this sauce right now, obviously, I've never really had a problem with anything. But this sauce will obviously roll around as you're driving. Because it's just chilling there by itself. As you can see, this one can's falling out of its packet and just sort of chilling out. Fine, a lot of people bagging the stand up fridges don't have them. Because they're like, oh, all your food will go everywhere. It's the same as your normal fridge. If you don't pack it right, you're gonna end up with a big mess on your hands. Um, like me and Mox talk about this all the time. We're like, cause we love them. We absolutely love these stand up fridges. It's like, I just, we challenge anyone, go out in the bush with, your, with one stubby in your fridge, glass stubby. Go full wheel driving as hard as you can and see if that smashes. It's going to, cause there's nothing around it. You put one stubby in this, it's just gonna lock it in. It's gonna stay there, so. It's all to do with how you pack it. If you're driving, you really want everything sort of squashed in on one shelf to stop it going everywhere. I've only ever had stuff fall out of the door once, but you do have to be ready for, if you've done some like big bumps or something like that, there is a possibility something could fall out when you open the door. But that's really, if you stack it right, it doesn't happen. I've literally, like I've had this thing on the car for almost two years now, and I've only ever had one thing fall out of the door when I've opened it, and we've done but we've done a lot. So that sort of smashes the rumor of your stuff's just gonna get smashed up and everything is gonna go everywhere. It doesn't, it is honestly, it is a way better in one of these. Everyone in, everyone in our account group, like people started getting them, everyone's like, oh yeah, whatever. And then now everyone's converting. It's, it's so much better. Um, I'm just gonna shut this so I don't use up too much power. Talking of power, all right. So this thing, this thing is obviously, I've had the door open then, it's running full full pelt now. Let me just go to me, me gauge. So as you can see there, it's drawing. This is at obviously full, full crazy revs. We're doing almost four, almost four amp hours, which I'm gonna be honest, that's probably the highest I've actually seen it. I thought it normally ran at 3.5 amp hours, which isn't much different, but there might be might have something else turned on in the canopy on the other side, <laughs> I have to double check that. I'd say it probably uses a slight bit more power than like a chest fridge, because when you open up this door, obviously if you've got hot wind and stuff, it's just going straight in there. Yeah, you get the sort of the same thing with the other one, but I would honestly, I'd probably say it does use slightly more power, but nothing to really be too concerned about. All right, another thing that I really like about it is, like I said it before, is the way it saves space. So obviously right now it looks you gotta go sound, it's not saving much space, it's pretty big. That is true, it is big. But you gotta remember, this is a real, like an 85 litre fridge is bloody massive, so. But obviously, you've got this. I've got a table um, underneath mine, so it slides out. There's still, I'm gonna be honest, my missus doesn't like this table being here because she reckons it's in the way. But when I'm here by myself, I've got my cook stove sits here, I can still open up the door. Um, all the way up with my stove on the edge to get my bacon and eggs out and that's pretty much all I'm really concerned about but my missus does want to get another table somehow and I'm going to be honest, I don't know how to fit it in because there's not much space in this thing. Um, but I have seen in other people's canopies when this does drop down because obviously I'm using up a bit of space for the table up, up here um, in like Mox's one and stuff like that or, or he's building new canopies for his car all the time so it could be on his Third last canopy he had for his car or whatever. He's a, he's a hunter, so he actually had, not, I don't think it was on this side, but on the other side, it came all the way through the canopy, and he had about that much room for like a gun safe above his, above his fridge, which I thought was really cool. So, they're not very tall, but the main thing is they're only 500 like in depth, so five, 500 mil in, into the canopy itself. So, this side of the canopy, obviously it's got a wall behind it, so this side is, sort of skinnier to this big storage side. So the storage side is a lot deeper, which with all the chest fridges and stuff, plus you need a, you need a slide and all that, and all the brackets that mount it down and stuff, you're wasting so much space with the extra, you have to go back in, plus the height, because you need all your handles for your slides and your, your lid and everything. So you would literally take up way more room if you had, had a chest fridge. So drawer fridges, 
less room again, because you can just obviously slide that out, but I've covered why I don't really like them too much. And I broke one, because there's not a lot of ventilation behind there. So, all right, let's talk about the ventilation you're gonna need if you wanna run one of these, I guess. All right, so this, uh, let me just um, clean that up a little bit. I haven't done much cleaning, but now that we can see what's actually going on. So this is, this is the back side of the fridge. As you can sort of tell, there is, like this is a lot deeper. I've got heaps of room on this side, plus my big drawer. So heaps of storage on the other side of the canopy, which I absolutely love. Um, this, he's done a little cutout in the back of the canopy, because I don't know if you can see in the dark back there, but there's a fan on the very back. You do need a bit of um, airflow behind it. That's actually hard up on the wall pretty much with this laser cutout panel. And that just allows the fan just to, yeah, vent or draw. I don't know which way it goes, but you do need airflow behind your fridge. So if you are setting it up, you don't want it in a completely sealed off thing if you're having like it right on the back because it's going to struggle with the heat. I like to, when we're at camp and stuff, on a really hot day, I'll just have all my doors open just to give it lots of airflow, lots of lots of ventilation stuff, because if we get any wind in, it's obviously it's just going to go straight in there. All right, so now I'm just going to get into the a little a little negatives that it has. I don't really know, to be honest. I don't know how long these things have been around for, the stand-up fridge life. They're, they're sort of just, I think they're designed for caravans mostly, but obvi obviously, as you've seen, they've entered the full drive market pretty viciously. Lots of people run them in their canopies, so. But I do think there is room for improvement on, on stand-up fridges and, well, in particular, the, the Bushmans. It's nothing really super major. It's just little things that I've picked up on that could be a little bit better, in my opinion. So we'll get into that. So start with this. This is your door, obviously. It's real nice. This is your handle just up here. Um, you just pull that, opens very nice. But this is actually, up here is the only spot that it actually hooks in. So if you come down here, I can't get the camera in there. You can actually just like peel it. You can't see any of that, can you? But you can just pull that open a bit. I don't know if you can see that movement, but that's me not really putting too much weight on it. So I've been told, especially in the big ones, because you can't actually get bigger than this. You can go to 125 liters. If you, if you need that much fridge space, you can get it. But then your door is a lot bigger. Um, you're gonna be able to put a lot more heavy stuff on this shelf. And apparently in the 125s, it's a lot of weight on the door. And it can just, cause it's not, hinged up, like it's locked up there, but there's nothing holding it in all the way down here and around. So that can just sort of wobble around a bit. Obviously it's gonna let a bit of, bit of air in and that's not good for your power consumption or the heat of your fridge. So I haven't, haven't really had that drama in the 85. Like you can move the handle around to either this side or I think you can even put them on the bottom to be honest. But honestly, I reckon it would be better on the side like, or a way that there was two things, but obviously you don't want to use two hands, so, yeah. And then the other thing is, like, if you go shutting, obviously this has to go into the fridge, like your fridge at home. If you sit, like you got your slab sitting out there or something, um, you can sometimes force it, and it will, the top will close, but the door will bend a little bit, and you'll have an air gap, so you do have to make sure that you do actually have enough room to close your door. Um, what's the other thing? The other thing, I sort of need cans in here to sort of, let me just get a bit set up. All right, I've set up my lovely cans across here. Um, obviously, when you're doing a fridge, I like to judge everything off how cans are gonna fit, because that's obviously a very vital point. So I was, you think, that's one six pack there, another six pack there. This is just your third six pack or whatever. It just doesn't fit. Like it's literally probably, I don't know, 10, 20 mil off fitting, and why? Why not just make the fridge that tiny bit wider so you could just, you could literally, if it was that tiny bit wider, you could grab your whole slab, like in the box and everything, and literally just slide it in there. Still squeeze a whole slab in there. I like to keep them in, in their, um, in their, I don't know, cardboard container things. I reckon it just helps, helps sort of hold it together, helps them instead of just going, rolling around everywhere. It gives it something to hold on to. So that's my little hot tip for that. The other thing is the freezer, it hasn't really done it at the moment, but it gets a lot of condensation around it just because it is a freezer. Like you get a lot of ice on the bottom of it. Um, this is mainly a problem if you're like me and you just completely forget about things when you do stuff. So 
If you turn it off and just sort of store it and there's a lot of condensation on your freezer, especially in a canopy or even in the back of your car, I guess, it will melt and then the water obviously is gonna use gravity to, <laughs> to come down. Um, and then it just comes out of here and sort of goes into the canopy, which has been a drama for me because I'm an idiot and I've left my phone chargers plugged in there, they're laying down here and I've written off three phone chargers because it's sitting in water and you'd think I'd learn, but I, honestly, I haven't. So you gotta, you have, obviously you gotta pay attention to what you're doing if you turn it off. You just put a towel in there or something like that. Like after you emptied it, put a towel in there, you won't have the same problem I'm having, but I keep forgetting. It's just one thing you gotta sort of keep in mind when you're doing it. Um, that's another thing, if you do, you don't want to spill milk in here, I would say, just because I've gone, if you're, if the water's done that much damage, I don't really want milk going through my canopy, but, hey, what are you doing? But yeah, as I was saying, you don't really want milk, milk going through your canopy, so I wouldn't put milk or juice or like anything that could possibly sort of leak um, out because you've opened it. Sort of like what I was saying with the drawer fridge, like if you put milk laying down on this, this shelf up here, your nozzles at that end, obviously, sort of like, let me just do an example, like that. I wouldn't want to store stuff like that in it, because it will, it will leak, and um, it will obviously go into your canopy or your car. Obviously, I've got a canopy, I don't really know too much about how you set it up in a wagon. People are putting them in wagons. It does the same thing, because your fridge, obviously, it's gonna take up a lot of room in your wagon, really deep. Um, these aren't as deep, and then you sort of, you can't really use that space behind it. But I have seen some people, they're sort of setting up behind the fridge is sort of their battery section, sort of water tank stuff you don't really need to get out. Um, so you can put them in a wagon, but the only, I don't know, the only thing I sort of thought about that would be if you're, obviously if you've got this loaded up, like I was saying with the, the hinge issue, is there's a lot of weight. If you're going up high country hills, everybody that knows, being to the high country knows, you don't get steeper than the high country. There'd be a lot of weight pushing back on this, and I just don't know, how well it would seal. So I reckon if you just got, if you're doing a lot of high country stuff, you got back to camp, I'd just push on that door and just make sure that it is completely sealed before you go leaving your car for hours on end. Because it might be slightly open and you don't know about it. That's sort of the little downsides, but to be honest, I honestly, I don't think it would turn me off buying one at all. It has been, it's one of my favorite things about this, this canopy setup. It has just changed it. It's so easy. You've just got, it's got stuff going on the whole time. And once again, the argument, if you've got one can in there, in any fridge, it tips over, it's gonna be rolling around forever. Chuck one can up in there, like, even in that center by itself, it's not really gonna go anywhere, so. Everyone who reckons it's gonna make a big mess, it doesn't, it honestly doesn't. Another little thing I think that could be, could be sort of sorted out a bit better is, this is, this is your revs, obviously. I've got mine set on four, which is kind of hauling ass, so. I like to run my fridge pretty cold. So these are my dials here. Obviously it's been open, but the freezer's still at minus six and or well, the fridge is at 11, but that's because it's open. That's nothing to do with the fridge. This is all ProWire is doing is put all these nice sensors down in here, which measures all the temperatures and stuff like that. Um, that's the only thing I was sort of thinking would be, like instead of just setting the revs, I know on some fridges you can set the temperature and that would be awesome, I reckon, if you could do that. and. I don't know, it'd be nice to see, like instead of having to put in all your gauges, which is kind of handy because you don't have to open up your fridge or something, but I don't know if everyone, as you see, your fridge at home, like, well, I don't know if they all have it, but my one, it's got sensors up there which tell you how your freezer's doing, how your fridge is doing, and you can set your temperature. I think that would be better than just setting the revs, so that's one other little thing that I reckon could be improved in the future. Just a quick rundown, I'm just well, basically just stand up fridges in general and just a little bit on the Bushmans. Um, I'm gonna be completely honest, I don't know a thousand little niggly details about it. All I know is that it works bloody awesome. Honestly, if you're thinking about getting, getting one for your canopy, definitely do it. I, apart from those little tiny things, it doesn't, like even those little things don't even bother me. So, best upgrade you can do in your fridge situation. Like chest fridges, honestly, I reckon they're a thing of the past. This is definitely the way to go. There's definitely a few things in the stand up fridge sort of industry that they could obviously work on. Cause they were, I'm pretty sure they were designed for caravans to start off with and they're not going, they're not doing all the big bumps and jumps and bangs and stuff that we're doing. Cause all well, the caravans you don't want to be doing that. But um, 
If you're driving a vehicle like this, obviously you're gonna take it places and your fridge is gonna cop an absolute hiding. So I think there's a few little things that could, could they could make a slightly better one in the future, which I'm sure they're going to. But um, anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. It's just nice and short and sweet. And um, yeah, I hope that helps you sort of make up your mind on should you get one or should you not. Honestly, I reckon you should. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. See you guys there. Cup of coffee on the car floor, what's more, Triple J, ignorance today.